Hello friends, this is Usman Chen in Physics Math class. In our tutorial today, I shall provide a solution to the problem before us. The question to read, a sample of a radioactive element with a half-life of 6 days has an initial mass of 128 gram. A obtained the values for the element remaining after 6, 12, 18 and 24 days. B. Plot a decay curve of the element using the values obtained in above. So you see, in this very question, for us to be able to answer the B aspect of this question successfully, it means we need the word the A aspect. Okay. Now this A aspect, we will go to answer it in form of table, so that we should be able to use the table obtained in A and answer our B aspect. With it. So let's get started. So you see, this is this is the table. Obtain, okay, but the only question that is un unanswered here is how do I actually obtain the table? Now you see first to power negative lambda t. This is the relationship, okay? But then this relationship is too long. If you go by this relationship, uh, it's not like we're not going to have the correct answer, but it's going to take us a longer time. Let us look at the easy, easiest one. So we use end is equal to a 1 over 2 all in bracket raised to the power t all over capital T uh, multiplied by remember this is not the power so it's multiplying by what the end node okay so when t is equal to a 6 that should be 6 divide 6 we're going to have 1 then 1 over 2 multiplying n node definitely we're going to give us a n node all over 2 that is for the first case for this first case we were going to have end node all over 2 so instead of writing 64 we can also write end node over 2 our end node is giving us 1 2 8 so 1 2 8 divide 2 we have 64 that is the first one so we'll move down to the second one all right the second one when t is equal to 12 we substitute it here this is 12, 12 divide 6 because the half-life is equal to 6, all right? So 12 divide 6, we're going to have 2. Now 1 over 2 all raised to power 2, all right? So 1 over 2 all raised to power 2, we're going to give us 1 over 4, all right? It will going to give us 1 over 4. So finally, we were going to have uh, end over 4. And our n is equal to 1, 2, 8. So 1, 2, 8 divide 4, we're going to have 32. So move down to the next one. The next one is when t is equal 18. And t, when t is equal 18, we are dividing it with 6. The half-life is equal to 6 days. All right? So uh, 18 divided by 6, we're going to have uh, 3. All right? So we have 1 over 2 all raised to power 3. Okay? So 1 over 2 raised to power 3, we're going to give us 1 all over 8. Okay, so 1 over 8 multiplied by n naught. So we're going to have, uh, for the total one, we're going to have n naught over 8. So it means the second one is n naught all over 4. The next one is n naught all over 8. And the last one, we're going to be n naught all over 16. All right, so by the time you said 128 divide 16, you're going to obtain what? 8. All right, but then how did I obtain uh, 16? It's still the same procedure. If you substitute 24 here, 24 divide uh, uh, 6, you're going to have 4. All right, so 1 over 2 all raised to the power 4, we're going to have 1 over 16. 1 over 16 multiplied by n naught, you have n naught all over 16. That is the last one, it should be what? Over 16, and you obtain this. Now, the next phase of it, this is just the solution of the first aspect, okay? And the second, these are the rows, all right? These are the rows. So we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we have 16 rows. So we come down here. We have our end. The highest number is 1, 2, 8. That was when the time is equal to 0. When the time is equal to 0, the radioactive element it is still intact 128 but after the time has gone towards 6 then the radioactive element becomes 64 when we have 12 the radioactive element becomes what 32 is actually disintegrating is breaking down all right so if that is true the the when the time is zero the total number of radioactive element is one two Eight. So we divide 1 to 8 with 16. When we divide 1 to 8 with 16, we were going to have that is our, our 1 to 8 divide 16. This is the number of what? Rules that we obtain here. Now we were going to have 8. It means that 1 centimeter from here to here is 1 centimeter. So 1 centimeter represents what? 8 unit. So if we, were, if we actually want to make it to 2 cm, we will now say 2 cm will represent 16 unit. Okay? So let's make it to 2 cm. I'm talking about the scale now. Alright? 2 cm represent uh, 16 unit. 16 unit. On on end axis. Okay? On n axis. That means this is zero. This should be 16. And this should be 32. And this one should be uh, from here to here. We have uh, 48. Okay. And this should be 64. And finally, here we have 1, 2, 8. Okay. So it means 2 cm 16. And you can see. It has covered all of our graphs. So we move on to the word, the rules, the, 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 the columns now. So columns, we are counting this, okay? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we are also have this, having 16, uh, 16 uh, columns. We have 16 columns, so the highest number here is 24. So we just go immediately. We we'll say 24 divided by 16. All right. So 24 divided by 16, we're going to have 1.4, 1.5. Sorry. So for the columns, we are going to have 24 divided 16, and this is going to give us 1.5. All right. So it means that one centimeter is equal to 1.5. So we're going to make it toward 2 cm. So 2 cm will be equal to what? 3 unit. All right. So we'll say 2 cm represent 3 unit on T axis this time around. Okay. So around this very axis is 2 cm. On the horizontal axis is 2 cm represent 3 unit on T Axis. So immediately, let us write it. So we having three, this is zero. So we have three here, and here we're going to have six, and we have nine, we have uh, twelve, we have uh, fifteen, we have eighteen, we have uh, uh, twenty. It should be twenty-one, and finally we have twenty-four. Okay. So this is the highest number, twenty-four here. Haven't obtained this, it means we are already done with what our scale. The next thing is plotting of the word the curve. All right, so let's kick start. When the time is zero, you should know that the radioactive element is still intact, the radioactive element is still one to eight when the time is zero. So, radioactive element is still one to eight. So, we'll mark here. This is just the point, okay? This is the point. All right? Now, when the time becomes 6, the radioactive element is 64. When the time is 6, the radioactive element becomes what? 64. So 6 go with what? 64. So you come up here straight. You can see this 64. So we cross here. It becomes 64. All right? So when the time become 12 the radioactive element become what 
32, all right? It becomes 32, so 12, it becomes 32. So this is 12, and this is 32. So we mark this point, all right? So we continue. When the time becomes 18, the radioactive element becomes what? 16. So 18, then 16. So 12, this is 16, we mark. All right? So when the time is 24, the radioactive element becomes 8. Okay? So 24, and this is 8. If this is 16, this is what? Actually 8. So we mark this. So this is the curve. So we join the line either using broom or any flexible material, all right? So we're going to join the, the lines now. So that is all. You see, this is what we call a decay curve, all right? This is the decay curve. It means 